Are we live? Mm -hmm. Is this video not fire? Or does it ask the people? Is this not, it's not, is this not helpful? <laughs> I'm done. Hey, Mean Green fam. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the 500 gallon smoker build. I appreciate having you. Grab you a beer, crack it open. We got something special for you today. What we have on the docket today, super important, super fun video. It's all things, handles, and hinges. So we're going to detail um, exactly how we installed our handles and our hinges on the smoker. And we will officially lift the first door on our uh, smoker. So we're really proud about this video. We worked really hard on this. So without further ado, let's check it out. Getting our hinge location set. This is a rough estimate here, but I'm working off one door right now. So on the outer edge of the one door, I came in about three inches. You can see that little silver square. If you look real close, I just buffed off some of that metal um, to give me some working room. And then all I'm doing is I'm taking that Sharpie and I'm marking a, a few inches up off of that cut seam on the top of the door because I'm going to lay one inch flat bar over that to seal it off. And I want to make sure that when I open my door, I have enough clearance. So I'm just marking roughly where that hinge is going to go in. Again, just to make sure that when I open it, there's enough clearance from the flat bar, making sure that it's not too far out towards the door, not too far in. I just want to make sure, again, I'm eyeballing, but I want to make sure that it's close. From there, once I get it sharpied in, I took this red magnet and I fixed it to the hinge. And when you do that, it allows the hinge to sit at a perfect 90 degree angle, perfectly vertical, which allowed Mike to lay in some initial tacks. Those aren't final welds, they're just tacks, but it gives us some, some working room to kind of step back and look at it and make sure we like it. Right here, I just repeat the process. Took the tiger paw, buffed out some metal, set that hinge on there with the red magnet, and then I had Mike tack it in. Now we measured it. So we made sure that the right side was equal to the left side as, as close as we could. I have to pause this video to tell you guys something very imperative. So if I've lost you so far, I need you back now. Okay, look, I did something when I was building this smoker that, that I almost was very angry at myself. Here's what I did. When I was cutting my doors out, I if you watch my last video, which I'll link, um, when I was cutting my doors out, my plan was to leave a little bit of the corners in each door. I didn't want to cut my door all the way out because as you just seen, we tacked on our hinges and then I didn't want to cut my door all the way out before I got the hinges on there. Once you pull that door all the way out, if you don't have your hinges on there, that's a whole other set of problems. So the plan was tack hinges on and then finish the cuts on the corners of the doors. But here's where I, I almost nearly went super wrong. I did not account for the placement of my hinge. So where I left a little bit of steel that still needed to be cut, the angle it was at, it, it almost made it impossible for me to finish out the door cut. And I was literally this close to having to knock off all of the hinges, take the, the cutoff wheel back, cut it more, put the hinges back on, whatever. So it was a nightmare. So I wanted to, cut into this video real quick and put this PSA out there. And the PSA is this, please leave less steel in each corner than you think is needed. Like I literally could have used a, a millimeter of steel left. It's enough to hold that door in. So with that said, let's roll the footage. So let's take a look at this. As you can see, this is what the point I was making. That cutoff wheel barely fit in that corner of the door and it was a nightmare on that side i came a little closer to the edge so i was able to uh, finagle it with a really uh, small cutoff wheel but on the other side i came too far past the hinge so the hinge is there as you can see and i came too far towards the hinge the other way it was impossible i really at this point i don't even know how we figured it out I used every tool in the toolbox short of a lightsaber and a plasma cutter. So we were able to finagle it, but I just wanted to show you guys that's what I'm talking about. So what should I have done? 
just come really close to that corner, leave enough space, we would have been good. And then as you can see, we're knocking off that bottom corner. Mike's tacking on a little makeshift handle and we're rocking and rolling. That's incredible. Mike, we did damn good. Hell yeah. Look at the inside of that puppy. Next portion of this video, super imperative, it's sealing off our doors, right? When we're building these smokers, uh, minimizing leaks is ideal. So here's how we did it. We cut our doors out, okay? You, you can see it, it's a square, and to cut the square, it creates a line. Now, if we don't cover those cut lines or those cut seams, then uh, smoke and heat will seep out. So how we did it, was we took some one inch flat bar and we welded it to all four sides of the door. There's a couple key points I just wanna explain before we cut to the video, and it's this. First, um, the one inch flat bar means it's it's one inch wide. And so you wanna split that uh, cut seam perfectly. The second piece is on the two vertical pieces that run up and down on the door, you wanna stop a half inch short of the corner of the door. You don't wanna come all the way up. Why do you do that? Because remember, you're gonna send some flat bar over the top, and since that flat bar is splitting the cut seam, that means a half inch of that flat bar will be coming down towards the corner. And so on that vertical, that vertical piece, you wanna stop a half inch short so you can merge those, pe those pieces perfectly together. It'll create a nice corner. So I hope that made sense, but we'll cut to the video so you'll see what I'm talking about. It's gonna sit, it's gonna split okay. the difference there. So you need to be down. Okay, I need half inch half down because this is a one yeah, inch. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I got you. So let's just put. Yeah. Like you said, put your little marker yeah. under half inch down. Or we could. Or we could prop this open, and just bring it all the way down. Uh, we can leave it shut for right now. We'll just okay. get our tack on there and look, look, a little half inch more. So if that's a mark. Now we'll lose our distance. So exactly. This is how wide. Uh, one inch. One inch. Yep. So we need to make a couple spots probably on this one because we'll open it up half inch marks down through here Now that's gonna, we're gonna need to set that other one right on top yeah, of it. Yeah, we'll probably come back and grind and, okay. and the rest of it, it looks pretty good. Okay. And we'll tack it in the middle.
getting the handles on the door is a pretty easy process. So Mike's just knocking off some of that rust and paint and steel, and we're going to try to fit up our handles. The handles were 29 inches long, and so we wanted to get the handles perfectly centered on the door. So Mike opened up the measuring tape 29 inches, and now he's just kind of fitting it left and right on that door to get as center as we possibly can. Then now what I'm doing, as you can see, is I'm just fitting up the, the handle plates, fitting it up on the door, making sure that it is in fact center. Another piece to keep in mind is you want to kind of play around with how high up or low you go with your handles. You know, if you go a little higher on the door, it's going to change the way that that door opens up for you. If you go lower, of course, it's going to change the way that the door opens. So play around with it. We did that, and uh, we liked what we had. So Mike's giving a nice little tack in, and then I'm going to step back and just take an overall look at it. Once you got your fitment, got it tacked, uh, you're going to want to take this square like we took and uh, just fit it on the inside corners. Make sure that it is the handle is, in fact, 90 degrees. It is you know, sitting how you want it to, and it's as square as possible. And uh, <laughs> that's a PSA not to stare at the welds. Oh! Mike! Like it. Let's go, bro! Let's go, man! Hell yeah! And it's easy yeah. to lift. You don't have to go to Wilson to get it to work out. At all, I'll just get it all right here. <laughs> That's it, dude. Heck yeah. There you have it, guys. Uh, that is how we installed our handles and hinges on our smoker. Before you go, before you run off, a couple quick things. If you're out there building a smoker, or if this is helpful, or if this is even just remotely entertaining, just, will you re really, will you just let me know in the comments? If you have questions, hit me up. I love to interact with some good barbecue people, and uh, I would appreciate it. So yeah, we appreciate you guys for checking the video out. We got some more coming up, but until then, meet and greet, over and out.